Within JRPGs, there are selections of untouchable titles, ones that are hailed as the gold standard of the genre and are said to stand the test of time no matter the year they are played. For many fans, a lot of these games come from the 16-bit era leading to the end of the millennium, yet even among those, there are some that establish a legacy all their own. Chrono Trigger is seen as one such title, a meeting of the finest minds of the era to make what many consider to be the greatest JRPG ever made. Which is why I was bracing myself, I knew how many people revere this game, but I have no nostalgia for the games of old, considering my late adoption of JRPGs as a whole. And I often prefer modern titles over older contemporaries anyway. For every retro JRPG I play, it will often be sandwiched between five modern ones, and even though I have played a few of the classics over the past year, they have shown their age at points, whether that be through design decisions that don't translate well to the modern era, or through a lack of convenience that is just seen as a standard now. These bugbears were in my mind for Chrono Trigger, which I think is one reason why I put it off for a long time. For all intents, this is a game that released in 1995, and I was expecting it to show its age at several points. The likelihood was that it would be a good game, but I had a feeling that I would not look on it as fondly as others did. Even so, I launched the game and within five hours, or within a single session might I add, I had to alt-tab out and write something down that just encapsulated everything I felt about this game. If history changed course and Chrono Trigger did not release in 1995, but everything else remained the same, so we still got Final Fantasy VII in 97, we still got Xenogears in 98, and we still got Skies of Arcadia in 2000, if everything else remained the same, but the only difference was that Chrono Trigger, instead of releasing in 1995, released this year, 2024, it would still be one of the best JRPGs released this year, even with the excellent games that have already released, and what we'd assume will be the excellent ones due to release in a few months' time. It has aged that well. Chrono Trigger isn't merely a great JRPG, rather it defines what a great JRPG is. It is the mould and the foundation that all other games follow to achieve a legacy of their own. Pretty much everything within the game is what the genre is known for, and it excels in every single one. From its stylized art style, its intuitive turn-based combat, an excellent and memorable OST, and a surprisingly gripping and well-paced story. Chrono Trigger has it all, and I am so happy to realize that my worries were unfounded. It is timeless, nearly 30 years on, it's amazing, and I guarantee 30 years later, it will still hold the same accolades. But what makes Chrono Trigger such a success? Why is it able to achieve this? Well, that's what we're going to discuss now. The game begins with the self-insert protag, called Chrono by default, going to a fair, where he meets the kingdom's crown princess, Mal, in disguise. After frolicking away among the attractions, Chrono's childhood friend Luca and her father unveil the main attraction, a teleporter. Of course, though, things don't go too well, as Mal is sucked into another time, and so Chrono endeavours to bring her back, thus beginning an epic time-faring journey. Now the whole of Chrono Trigger is set on one map, so to speak, but that map is split between several time periods, ranging from the earliest days of man to the distant and bleak future. Chrono Trigger is heavily tied to the cause and effect phenomenon concerning time travel, this idea that an action in the past can affect the future. And even in the earlier stages, the game grips you in with that approach. Your actions, for example, in this fair, become a massive part of a future event. They don't change the outcome, but they immediately present to you what Chrono Trigger is all about, and it only gets more involved as the hours pass. But despite how convoluted that premise may seem, it's constructed in a way to ensure the player never gets lost. There's no guides or breadcrumb trail, yet it will give a notable clue as to where you should go next, but it's done in a way that will always lead you to your next objective without outright giving you the answer. And it's because of this approach that I feel the game is so well paced. You're often spending a couple of hours max between the different eras, not including side content. You complete a main story marker and then move on to the next, so you're always witnessing something fresh. But the game also manages to breed familiarity in the player and the land, because for all intents, it still takes place in that one world. It's merely the time that changes, not the world itself. So you'll see familiar structures, land masses, and so on, and as such, you'll never get that feeling of being outright lost in an unfamiliar world. Even so, those eras do feel a world away from each other, at least visually, and you have to praise the artistic direction for that, and by extension, it's OST, as they both work in complete harmony together. From the environments to the characters themselves, Chrono Trigger's style endures and excels to this day. Sprites are well animated, and the different environments are presented superbly. 
Even on the PC version, which is considered one of the lesser methods of playing the game, at least when it first came out partly due to how it handled the visuals, it still holds up. But then in between, you'll also get these awesome anime cutscenes once in a while, courtesy of the late, great Akira Toriyama. If I had one wish, it was that there were more of these in the game, but you can't have it all your own way. You can call it nostalgia if you want, but these cutscenes are the cherry on top of this delicious Victoria sponge, and the game was all the better for their inclusion. You'll explore the land, progress the story, and it's as if the game is rewarding you for your efforts, not that it needed to provide much more of a carrot to keep you engaged anyway. And that's because its gameplay is stellar. Exploring the world, jumping between eras, talking to NPCs to get tips on later events and boss fights, finding treasure, it's all JRPG 101 and I love it. The turn-based combat was a particular highlight for me purely because of how quick it is. Initially, you're not exactly bumping into random encounters, rather, the enemies appear at fixed destinations. The transition is seamless, and as such, it feeds into the already strong pacing of the battle system as a whole. There are random encounters, if you will, but since there's no transition in between, it never feels like that's the case, addressing one of my biggest issues with older titles. And then there's the battles proper. You have a max of three members, each tied to an ATB gauge. And when that gauge fills, the character has a chance to act. Each character also can use techs, which are their individual skills, and they learn more as the game progresses through tech points that are rewarded at the end of battle. But what really sets the battle system apart are the use of dual and triple techs, where characters come together to release an even stronger technique. This ensures that not only each character has a strength of their own, but it also encourages experimentation, customization with different party layouts to find the combos that work for each boss fight. For example, some bosses will be highly resistant to physical attacks, so you want a strong layout of magic users with specific techs and dual techs, while others will have additional targeted parts that have to be prioritised first so you can bring in characters with multi-hit techs to take them out fast. The genius of the dual and triple techs, though, is that simply using them is not the be-all and end-all of the fight. There's inherent risk and reward from doing so. If you use a triple tech, for example, sure you get a massive spike of damage as a reward or even a full heal, but you then need to wait for your character's ATB gauges to fill back up, leaving you vulnerable to a counter-attack. It's such a well-designed system, it's quick, it's engaging, battles require levels of strategy to overcome, and you've got a wide array of equipable items for different situations. Everything that makes a great turn-based system is here. And if the standard main story battles aren't giving enough challenge, there's plenty of side content to get involved in, especially as you get to the latter stages. These side quests and dungeons are well done too, with one in particular just blowing my mind in terms of what it presented. They're very involved and are often tied to certain characters, giving an added glimpse into their backstories while also rewarding the player with some of the best equipment in an effort to aid them for the final battles and thereby ending the game. However, talking about the end of the game in Chrono Trigger is not as cut and dry as one may think, and that's because it not only has 13 different endings, but some of them can be attained very early if you're able to overcome the challenge. For all intents, the game has one singular goal, which is to defeat the main antagonist. Even so, it offers many different routes to complete that objective. The easiest way is to push through all the errors and follow the story along for those 15 to 17 hours, the traditional way. But you will often see scripted fights as well, or at least that's what they seem like. You may think you're destined to lose these, but you can actually win them and end the game there. Naturally, to do so requires a lot more preparation and the challenge is more notable because of this, but the fact that you even have the option is great. Right there, you have content designed for hardcore players and content designed for those who are more casual, with notable rewards to those looking for that challenge. So the art direction is stellar, the premise of time travel is well utilised, the OST is brilliant, the combat is well designed and it offers multiple ways to see it through to its conclusion. The only thing left are the story and characters. Well, the characters are great, and I put that down to its surprisingly strong writing. Not much is said between the characters per se, but every word has weight behind it, an intended meaning, if you will. And it helps as well that many of them don't take themselves too seriously. There's plenty of humour sprinkled throughout tied to their personalities. Marl, for example, is a tomboy princess who has that go-getter extrovert attitude, and it will often show in her speech and mannerisms. 
Some of the villains play on comedy skits of their own, trying to lure the player into obvious traps or scuppering their own plans through sheer incompetence. The cast is diverse, engaging and relatable in many ways. I was pleasantly surprised with what was shown here and the art direction was just an added bonus. As for the story, well, I was hooked. And I know exactly why that was. Chrono Trigger's story is not complex. It has time travel and paradoxes, but for all intents, it's easy to understand, and much of what happens in the game won't be surprising you if you're a veteran of JRPGs. You've seen it five times before, you've seen it here too. Even so, Chrono Trigger's story was brilliant, and I concluded that the reason it succeeds is because of its laser focus on its main antagonist, the key objective of the entire game. While I don't want to go into heavy detail since this isn't a retrospective or spoiler review, what I will say is that the antagonist of Chrono Trigger is one of the most menacing and terrifying within the genre. What is so amazing about that though is that this is not a mastermind or someone that concocts far-reaching schemes while playing 4D chess with everyone else. Rather, it is just a pure, primal threat, one that connects all the timelines intrinsically and thereby the effect of this antagonist is felt everywhere. It drills home the idea that even travelling through time doesn't allow you to escape its influence, and thus the only way to truly be free from it is to somehow defeat it. Combine that with its already stated great pacing and its solid offerings in gameplay, and you've pretty much nailed every aspect of what makes a memorable JRPG. So I'll say it again, Chrono Trigger is timeless. And as those credits rolled over that ending sequence, and I pondered the question in my head as to how this was even possible, I saw the names that were involved with it, and audibly exclaimed to myself, oh well, there's my answer. Even outside of that dream team of Akira Toriyama, Yuji Horii, and Hironobu Sakaguchi, there are so many big hitters of the genre who have gone on to establish their own legacies who are also involved with Chrono Trigger. We're talking Uematsu, Yasunori Mitsuda, Tetsuya Takahashi, Yoshinori Kitase, Yasuyuki Hon. Like, this is unreal, the amount of talent that worked on this one game. And when you realise that, it's no wonder that Chrono Trigger has stood the test of time. It was a combination of some of the finest minds of the genre working on one project. It was always going to succeed as soon as the budget was set and pen was put to paper to sign off the development process. And the world is better off for it. It's been, what, 30 years since the game released? And Chrono Trigger is still one of the finest JRPGs ever made, ultimately encapsulating the definition of what makes this genre great. And 30 years later, I am certain it will still hold the same accolade. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more JRPG content and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace.